Life is a few days of trouble A wise man once said But I'll not complain For I'm sheltered, I'm clothed And I'm fed But many's the trial my wants and my dreams put me through And the only real peace that I have Dear Lord, it's in you The only real peace that I have I need you and I know I do Cause the only real peace that I have Dear Lord, it's in you The heart of sword in my dreams, the harder I fall. And sometimes I've wondered if dreams are worth dreaming at all. But my disappointment. Isn't it great to know, everybody, the peace of God which passeth all understanding. It's the only real peace we have and can have, especially in these days of trials and tribulations. And welcome to...
Peter. This morning service from the Pentecostal Holiness Church. Have I got news for you? Mm -hmm. Have I got news for you? This, everybody, hi, I'm David Griffiths, my wife, Lindsay, here, who throws her hymn sheets away to great <laughs> despair. <laughs> this is the Stranron Wigtonson Free Press. Oh, splendid paper. And guess what the government has now banned? Sneezing? Um, I mean, our subject today but is, is even now many antichrists. And I'm telling you this, this is getting mad. Mm -hmm. Now, let me give you a clue. This does not mean you cannot go to your weekly visit to the hairdresser. But the government has banned curling. What? Oh, you mean that kind of curling as in curling. ice curling. string curling? Because, because, no. Because this is in the strand. Now, look, look, look. Frozen out while the roaring game is left screaming for urgent financial help. Now, those of you who don't live in Scotland and Canada might not have heard of curling. But curling is a game like bowls, but on ice and you have brushes and throw them. And it's very, very popular with the farming community and around here. And there's some great curling champions. Gail, Gail Munro. There she is. Aww. There she is. There's Gail Munro. I'll just show it to everybody. There's Gail Mon Munro. Fine fine Scottish wifey right that means she's big all good Scottish wifey's are big Gail Munro Stranra Ice Rink manager announced the heartbreaking news earlier this week to the hundreds of curlers who play the roaring game here ice rinks are across Scotland are being frozen out with 24 out of the remaining 27 closed because of COVID. There's no COVID here that I know of. In any case, if it's frozen, you know, it's hardly likely to sort of make it worse, is it? Not only. Should be better in a freezing temper. It's nice Our and healthy. today is many anti-Christ. Mm. To suppress people from their leisure is an operation of the one who comes to kill, kill, kill steal, and destroy. But that's not all. You might think that that's the end of the undertaking business. Because there's also a headline, Nail in the Coffin. Now, what does that mean? Hotelier, this is, do you know the Cadwallader Hotel overlooking Loch Ryan in mm. uh, Stranra? Oh. You don't know it. <laughs> well, I know it. <laughs> the Cadwallader Hotel right. in Stranra is one of the big hotels on the front in Stranra overlooking uh, the, uh, the Loch Ryan. Beautiful place. He has had to close down for Christmas except for bed and breakfast. Uh, and that's all he can do and takeaways. No of the, you know, office parties and so forth. Can I tell you this? I believe, Lindsay, there's a deliberate plan to destroy the economy to bring in the great Oh, people. absolutely. Especially, we, yeah, as yeah. the church, the real church, are taking this on. Well, I mean, I read in this wonderful paper, which is cost a pound, the free press cost a pound. <laughs> very, very Scottish, that is. I can tell you that. But there's good news for Galloway Beef. Hey! They've done a deal with Aldi, the Germans. So you can buy your Galloway beef, which is Galloway black, which is, uh, you know, is a famous breed of cattle in the Galloway area. And let me tell you, though, we're all joking apart. We're going to get into the word today and pull down these antichrists and set the people free. If you are a hotelier today, look, one pound out of every three pounds in tax comes from the hospitality industry even higher than the sale of pharmaceuticals you are dealing with a deliberate pulling down of the economy what you're dealing with today what is the church saying well we're saying the remnant church is standing up lindsay suicides attempted suicides i have the figures from the London Ambulance Brigade. We can back up what we mm. say. Nearly double, Lindsay. People losing their businesses. The stress mm. 
the strain. You sung the only real peace. I did indeed. Can I commend to you our Saviour today? Because what we're dealing with going on in the world, and, and Pam, who's just joined us from Huddersfield, full time here, fellow minister, we were looking at Sky News Australia, who reported today, wait for this, t taken into the Biden team who thinks he's going to be president, who he isn't. Who is I'm it? speaking who by the it? spirit. He's taking on somebody in government, as he sees it, who is sympathetic to suicide bombing. We are dealing with this great reset, mm. which used to be called the New World Order, that used to be called the God of this world, and is still called that by the Bible. The devil coming to kill, to steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that ye may have life, and life in abundance. And God's will is not to destroy the hospitality industry. God's will is not to stop the people from killing. God's will is that we as human beings be able to communicate with each other Amen. and not wear the masks of Egypt. Did you know one of the signs of being a slave is to wear a mask within Egypt culture of ancient Egyptian culture? Did you know, Lindsay, that what we're dealing with today is to place people in bondage? Did you know that marking the skin through bloodletting is an occultic mm. ceremony? The Bible warning. How many people have tattoos today? Loads, thousands. How many punctures per second by these tattoo machines do people allow it's called bloodletting in the Bible. It's the mark of the beast. We are dealing with, have you noticed how many tattoos are of occultic origin? Mm. We are dealing with a people being put into bondage and slavery. But Jesus is saying, I've come that ye may have life. And it's that life we're going to reveal today. Thank you, Lindsay. We'll see you later can take the free press with you which costs a pound <laughs> the one pound press it should be called hallelujah father we come in the name above every name that at the name of jesus every knee shall bow whether under the earth upon the earth or above the earth the Father, thou hast called us to speak out thy word today, to bring about the conditions for revival. Oh, Father, we bring the people to thee who are being placed under the clutches of Babylon to be set free, that men, women, and children be able to free, to go about their lawful business, not be bound by a phony disease that came from Wuhan, China. Oh, Father, we pray for the Chinese people too to be set free from the totalitarian regime which now China intends to place upon the whole earth. In the name of Jesus, Father, we come unto thee and declare thy word today. The first letter of John is so powerful on this subject. The first letter of John does not mess about in its language. It addresses us as little children. That's who we are as the church. But not little children as depicted in the phony cattle away in a manger. A little Lord Jesus. No, no, no. That is another operation of the Antichrist. It is the Antichrist determination through Christmas carols to get us looking at the manger, get us looking at the child in the womb rather than the crucified Christ who rose again that now lives in our hearts and that we are mighty warriors in him. Now you see the plan. We are here to build up the army of the Lord. 
The army of the Lord is the undefeated champions of the God of this world. We say to him today, we know your plans. We know what you are up to. The Bible tells us what you are up to. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. How then can we be a sinner saved by grace when the word commands us not to sin? When we are washed by the blood of the Lamb. Oh, Lindsay and Pam here with me in the studio, let me show you. And those at home, this wonderful book, J.D. Drysdale, Prophets of Holiness, written by Norman Grubb, who worked with my dad. When he describes by the word of God what it is to be a born-again Christian, you will understand that what takes over us is the Christ himself, the Christ of Calvary who rose from the dead that we in Jesus' name should overcome every obstacle. The new birth written by Norman Grubb to Mr. Drysdale was in itself a revolutionary experience. A revolutionary God's will is that we be revolutionaries in the spirit. We are to do natural, no natural harm. But what we are to do is harm in the spirit, the citadels of Satan, that they have to bow down so low, they're unable to get up, that we can give them the biggest kick in the backside, so that the people of this nation, the people of the nations of the world, because I'm telling you, we're now entering the time of the end time revival, which is going to be so great and so powerful, that God is building up his army. The new birth of Mr. Drysdale was in itself a revolutionary experience. He deplored any light evangelism which might open the door to easy believerism as he put it. Now I was honored to listen to the ministry not of Mr. Drysdale but by the man who Followed him as principal of the Emmanuel Bible College, Birkenhead, his son-in-law, the Reverend Stanley Banks. And I remember the mission hall being silent as those tones of the Almighty came through this prophet of God. He deplored any light evangelism which might open the door to easy believerism. He wrote a booklet on the new birth in which, after he explained what it is not and what it is, he gave the following scriptural characteristics of those who are born again, washed by the blood of the Lamb. One who is born again and he produced a test, one in the negative and one in the positive. He said negatively, the born again believer sinneth not. 1 John 5, 18. You see, I'm in 1 John for a purpose today to say who we are in Christ Jesus. Yes, we go under all kinds of temptations. Yes, we have to battle every day. But the born again believer, washed by the blood of the Lamb, 1 John 5, 18. We read 17 first. All unrighteousness is sin. There is a sin not unto dead, unto death. We know that whosoever is born of God, sinneth not. Say, sinneth not. Sinneth not. But he that is begotten, not in new translations, 
it will it goes because it goes totally against their doctrine. They want to place you under the Vatican. Yeah. He that is begotten, begotten literally meaning of the same substance. Jesus having prayed, John 17, 21, the day, meaning the church be one as we are one. If there is sin in the church, how then can it be that branches can connect to the vine? How can branches bring forth fruit? How is it that we, when we are born again, are not washed by the blood of the Lamb, that our sins are taken to the bottom of the very deepest sea, never to be restored to us, because we have been washed clean, by the blood of the Lamb. This comes to the second negative point of Drysdale. Cannot sin. 1 John 3 and verse 9. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. Yet after seven months in the kirk here in Whithorn, never once did we hear this being taught, but just the opposite. That we are just sinners saved by grace. As Leonard Raymond Hill said, sinners saved by grace that makes us a married bachelor. For the Bible declares we are married to him. The Bible declares that we were bought with a price. We are not our own. The Bible declares that those joined to the Lord are one spirit. And to declare we are sinners saved by grace is a heresy beyond heresies. Why? Because if we are joined to the Lord as one spirit, this makes him a sinner too. Now this is what I'm so encouraged about. Drysdale's next point, verse 18 of chapter 5. What a wonderful book this is, 1 John. We know that whosoever is born of God, yes, sinneth not. We've dealt with that. He is, it is, begotten of God, keepeth himself. <laughs> and that wicked one toucheth him not. We are the champions. We are the untouchable. Isn't that what it says? The wicked one toucheth him not. Then Norman Grubb reports about this ministry of J.D. Drysdale, prophet of holiness. The other evidences that a man is truly born again are seen in the following characteristics. Now for those of you who are politically correct and don't like the word man, it means mankind. Those of you who are intelligent will know that that means man and woman. That God created man and then came woman. We know our scriptures rather than our political correctness. And all this garbage in university degrees having to write humankind if you write mankind. Look, not in this college. I tell you, we speak it as it is. Not under the new woke culture. So what are the other characteristics of the born again Christian? He keeps Christ's commandments, referring to John 14. He confesses with his mouth Jesus as Lord, referring to Romans 10. He has the fruit of the Spirit in his life, Galatians 5.22 
and he is led by the Spirit of God. And then Norman Grubb reports, finally, another very striking evidence that one is truly born again is an intense longing for holiness. So much so at times that some have been tempted to question if they have ever been truly born again. But there need be no anxiety on this point. The very fact that one hungers and thirsts after righteousness is a sure key to understand our position, to know that as the hymn writer wrote, Fanny J. Crosby, we have the blessed assurance that Jesus is mine and nothing can take that away as we are led by the Spirit of God. We move in all righteousness, in power, in glory and dominion that whatever we say in the name of Jesus has to happen. That's what makes us more than conquerors. Are you enjoying 1 John? Today, well, I'm telling you that the letter of John contains a warning. It tells us that even now there are many antichrists in the world. Little children, verse 18, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that antichrist shall come, even now are there many antichrists whereby we know it is the last time. The actions of Antichrist are to increase the suicide ratio. Government, repent before God. You have listened to the sage committee rather than the God of our constitution. I have here our coronation service. It describes the word of God as the lively oracles of God, our gracious queen declared the moderator of the Church of Scotland, to keep your majesty ever mindful of the law and the gospel of God as the rule for the whole life and government of Christian princes, we present you with this book. What was the book that was presented? The King James Bible. And how in British constitutional law is it described? The most valuable thing that this world affords. But has the Johnson government given reference to the word of God, the healing covenant promises of God? If you hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God, none of these diseases which I have placed upon the Egyptians will come unto you. Did you know that even to this day, that every law-making conference in the House of Commons, by law, has to begin in prayer. Every single one. Before a law is passed, the government has to seek the assistance of God. But the laws upon our nation are not laws at all. They're decrees of King Darius as in the days of Daniel. And I'm telling you now to open the churches in the name of Jesus. Get on your knees. Sing his praise. Remove your masks. And seek God with all your heart. That is the way to defeat disease. Darius issued a decree that no one should pray. Johnson issued a decree that no one should sing in church. Your choice is the decree of Darius and Johnson or the word of Almighty God. You say you are inciting people to break the law. No, I'm telling you now we have a law 
the constitutional law which our Queen promised before God to uphold the Protestant reform religion established by law in the 1534 Act of Supremacy. I have it here before me. I provide you with the primary evidence. What is the first demand upon every government in the 1534 Act of Supremacy? Restored by Queen Elizabeth I in 1559. What is it? To increase in virtue. The anointing of Christ's religion. Wow. Choose ye this day. This or the sage committee. What is interesting is that even scientists are coming against the science. Dr. Carlos Sikora, former head of cancer care with the World Health Organization, has criticized the lockdown, knowing all the effects of lockdown, increased in suicides, lack of care to cancer and heart patients, heartache beyond description for the small businessman, like the owner of the Craig Wilder Hotel in Stranra. Frustration, like the manageress of the ice rink in Stranra. Perhaps we should take up curling when it reopens. Pam and Lindsay can go on the brushes. I'm telling you this. This is the work of the Antichrist. Mm. But I'm telling you also that when it comes to January and this I prophesy there's going to be an almighty world war. It's already in existence. The American election. Evidence has come to us of massive fraud. Cyber warfare has played its part. That what we have witnessed is a coup d'etat not on the streets but through the cyber internet electronic world that we are seeing corruption at a level in an election like no other nation on earth has witnessed. And as we prophesied, Trump will triumph for this is all to come out. Oh, Thus saith the Lord, I am he that liveth, that liveth and was dead. Behold, I am alive forevermore. Come unto me, O ye who are heavy laden. I will give you rest, for I am telling you today, have no fear. Fear is a strategy of the enemy. People are even afraid to go into a shop with a mask. Now, I put on a mask basically to keep them all quiet, not because I believe it will do any good. My protection is not on the outside. It's on the inside of me. And that inside of me, my mind becomes renewed. My body becomes quickened. The Word says it's the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Dwell within you. He shall. Say shall. Child. Quicken your mortal body. What a word we have today. And I love this in verse 20. And get this. I'm loving this today. I'm loving the triumph today. I'm loving the reality of who I am in Christ Jesus today. Get this, and this is an important word, verse 20 of chapter 2. Ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. You know, I've given up the three stooges of British journalism. Three stooges, a name given them, by Mike Graham of Talk Radio. He refers to Peston of ITV, Kunzberg of BBC, 
and Rigby of Sky News UK as the Three Stooges. He refers to the Brothers Grimm, Valance and Witty. What's it say in Isaiah 53? I, <laughs> but who hath believed our report? Who can you believe? Jesus Christ laid his life down for you. So I we preach the blood of Jesus. Not only did he take our sin and iniquity. He took our griefs, our sorrows, our sickness and disease by whose stripes we were healed 2,000 years ago. And one can touch the fear that is all around us. But we in this ministry have that blessed assurance, Pam and Lindsay. Nothing can come against us and succeed. We were sharing earlier of all that has come against us. Ma, we're still here. We were threatened in 2010 that we would be destroyed through official channels by text message. And a group was set up to destroy us. We were threatened by one lawyer before one court hearing that if we say one word, we will be destroyed and give him £9,000. We have seen the corruption of the legal services taken over by the left-wing woke culture. Because not only is there a cyber war, not only is there a bacterial viral law, war, not law, war, there is also what's known as the culture wars, for which preference is given to minorities. I reject the whole concept of Black Lives Matter, not that we say Black Lives don't matter, we talk about it as a political institution which is fundamentally racist to the core because it draws a differential between black, white and brown. I tell you in the name of Jesus, red and yellow, black and white, all are precious in his sight as the children's chorus, as we used to sing at Sunday school. God sees no difference in the color of his skin. He came to save souls, not skins. I like the approach of Martin Luther King, who correctly, as a prophet of God, came against the injustices in America, which saw a black man as inferior to a white man. But his approach was non-violent, unlike Antifa and BLM today. His approach was one of love. And what happened to him, in effect, was crucified for what he stood for. But he said, I've seen the promised land. Mm. And that promised land he described where a black child could grow up as equal with a white child. And this is the promised land. You see, when we choose one race and give it priority, we disobey the word of God because God so loved us all, he gave his only begotten son. And let me remind you this. It was evangelical Christians who stopped the slave trade. And they did it through love and being prepared to give their lives for others. And the slaves in the cotton fields of Southern America in Alabama wrote some of the greatest Christian songs ever in existence because they were written from a heart of love compassion and forgiveness rather than the brutality of Antifa and Black Lives Matter. And as for bending the knee, I only bend the knee to one. <laughs> the 
King of kings and Lord of lords. Football is under bondage to this. Governments are under bondage to us. But I tell you this, it's us who are the conquerors. It is us who are coming out in force to take this world for Christ. Are you with us? And with this I conclude. And it's chapter 3. This is so precious of 1 John. You know, we can put aside, excuse me for bending down and just picking up two books. COVID-19, The Great Reset by Klaus Schraub. <laughs> Garbage. Gone. The Nestle land texts of the Vatican denying the deity of Christ, denying his virgin birth, denying who we are in Christ Jesus, that is, denying the resurrection as it means to believers. <laughs> Garbage. And as for the infiltration as we've been covering on Tuesday nights in our restoration program, we are grateful to Albert Edser and his book, Set Your House in Order, who shows how the New World Order took over the precious Elam denomination, even taking to court its founder in the same way in which we were taken to court. To take all our wealth away from the remnants, for the New World Order has stolen church movement after church movement. Now, Trump's campaign in America to bring a true election result, it's called the Great Steal, S-T-E-A-L. But I'm telling you of a greater steal, that is of the church taken over by the God of this world. And we are here in Jesus' name to take it back. The Bible declaring... When a thief, Lindsay, is found, what does he have to do? He has to restore sevenfold. Sevenfold. That is our ministry here at the Bible College of Wales. That is why we are growing day after day, moment after moment. We're entering a new season of revival and triumph for which the God of this world, we are going to insist bends the knee to Jesus Christ. One final report. Our brother Brian Mason is back this afternoon with his first Advent service. They put him down as being dead when he came back from South Sudan or on the road to South Sudan like an old Hollywood movie of the on the road to South Sudan when he fell into a serious diabetic coma one district nurse said to me he hasn't got long to live well how long ago was that Lindsay uh, she's counting it she's counting 16 it months 16 ago. months ago before me he had a heart attack he then had another heart attack they were going to do a bypass operation at the Golden Jubilee Hospital in Glasgow. But did not feel he'd make it through the anaesthetic. Everything looked grim. But I'm telling you this. Greater is he who is in me. I said to Lindsay, I said, he's hearing from God. He was about to go through a procedure to give him six stents. Well, I've never heard of anyone go through six stents. And then I started speaking to him. I said to Lindsay, he's very sparky. And I went to see him in the Dumfries Royal Infirmary when he'd returned from Glasgow. And I said, Lindsay, he's looking sparky. And now he's back with us to do his programs again. And his... I bless her heart. What's the name? Hazel. 
his heart failure nurse. What a title. Would you like a title called, uh, well, are you, uh, I'm a heart failure nurse. Well, not the greatest of titles, but she's a lovely girl. And God bless her. She said, he's been lucky. Well, when anyone in the natural says lucky, I know it's a miracle. Mm. And she's now become his heart rehab nurse. Oh, she's been promoted, Lindsay, to yeah. a heart rehab nurse. Well, praise the Lord. Look what the Lord has done. But he'll be back this afternoon with his Advent service. It's a miracle because medics didn't give him much hope. But if you hearken, you see the key to miracles is in the listening. If you hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God, none of these diseases. Have we a saviour today? Hallelujah. Are you going to choose him over the brothers Grimm and the three stooges? You see, even now there are many antichrists. Mm. Lindsay come and sing this Dottie Rambo. You know, suffering takes us through the fire, but we always overcome. Dottie Rambo now in heaven is a lady who certainly went through the fire, but brought so many to the Lord Jesus. Lindsay come and sing this lovely song, Too Much to Gain to Lose. I know you want to say she's bursting with something to say as well. No, I'm just well, uh, saying thank you, David, for that wonderful, wonderful, encouraging word today. And thank you, Lord Jesus, above all, for what you've done for us, especially the miracle that he's just told you about, about our brother Brian Mason, who should have been dead several times over. And instead, he's back here in an amazing resurrection. <laughs> And you can see him this afternoon if, you, uh, if you're still around and available. And that is why we must never give up following the Lord and, and listening to his voice and obeying. Because there's too much to gain to lose in the title of this song by Dotty Rambo. Yeah, it's coming, Lindsay. Are you ready? Okay, for yes, yes, dear. Come on. Isn't he a technical genius? There we are. <laughs> Too many miles behind me. Too many trials I'll be. That help me to remember There's too much to gain to lose Too many sunsets Lie behind the mountain Too many rivers My feet have walked through Too much to gain to lose. I walked the hot burning desert. I was struggling. The right road to choose But somewhere up ahead There's cool, clear water And defeat is a one away I never use Mountain, too many rivers. 
my feet of your truth to many treasures awaiting over yonder and there's too much to gain to lose too many treasures And there's too much to gain to lose. That's a wonderful song. And it's so true. And never give up because somewhere up ahead there's cool, clear water. The rivers of living water which also flow out through us I'm sure you've been blessed today by the encouraging words you've received also remember to be on the watch like Jesus said watch and pray and look for the signs of the times for there are already many antichrists around but we have the victory in Christ Jesus bye for now and God bless you